Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know who I am, I'm Elliot. This is everything Elliot. And this is my Kubota L4701 tractor. Now, if you've been a subscriber of the channel that you, you know that in the wintertime, I do a lot of snow removal. Now, I have my forks on because, well, I was moving some firewood, but you know I normally have a snow pusher on front. And this year, I added a seven foot wide snow blower to the rear of my tractor. Now, I think this is going to be a game changer for this winter with snow removal. Now, we did have a green Christmas, which is unfortunate compared to last year where we had about, I think it was about eight feet of snow this time last year. So it's it's been unseasonably warm for where I live, which is unfortunate because I spent the money on this snow blower and go figure we're not gonna get snow. But there's one thing left I need to do to this tractor to make it work in the winter time. Now, I mean it works, but work well is what we wanna do. Now, first things first, I'd like to apologize for the noise. Even though I just got finished saying it's unseasonably warm, we're standing right next to my Linair waste oil heater because it is 30 degrees outside. Hanging right here are some tire chains. Well, I made these last year and they worked very well. I also remember them being very difficult to get up here and very heavy. Now, here's the tire chains, and like I was saying, I made them last year. They're homemade tire chains. I don't remember exactly what they cost me, but I think it was around $300. And the cheapest set I could find for my tractor was around $800. So I made them last year and I, and I thought that I'd have to make modifications to them, but they work super well. If you're interested in making them yourself, I'll, I made a whole video on how to make them. So I'll leave that like up top or down in the description or something. I'm sure you guys will be able to find it. So putting tire chains on isn't super easy but you can make your life a lot easier by lining it up with your tire and just driving over it. So I've got this pretty well lined up. Now I should just be able to back the tractor right over top, but I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side so I don't have to keep starting and stopping the tractor. Sometimes you can get a tangle in these. You just gotta spend some time figuring out which way it needs to go to untangle. So what I believe to be the easiest way to put these on, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but is to just get the tire onto the chain. That way you can use the weight of the chain to drape over, and then it's not as hard holding it up to hook things up. <sighs> Got to kind of walk the chain over. Ah. 
So what I like to do is just get this to a pretty comfortable spot. And I don't even tighten it yet because I need to pull this tractor back and forth a couple times to make sure that it's all even and then we'll tighten it up even more. Same thing on the inside. So I can't even get the inside connected because it's too tight out here. So we gotta loosen this one up. We're gonna give ourselves some more slack on the inside. Like that. So I'm gonna repeat the same process on the other side and then uh, we'll just roll the tractor back and forth, let this find where it wants to be, and then we can really tighten it up. So with both sides hooked up, you can see that it's still very loose, but I also have this large gap here. Now, I'm just going to run the tractor back and forth a couple times to let this chain kind of naturally fall where it wants to. I know there's going to be a gap here, there always is, it's just how I designed it. I mean, not that I designed it that way on purpose, it's just how it came out but the gap should not be this large. So once I tighten this chain up and we get some of that slack out, it'll suck in some of that slack. Might actually be able to get... Now, you know what, we'll leave it, we'll just run it. So now I can take some of this slack out, but what I wanna do is I'm gonna take it out on the inside um, I'm gonna take a couple out because I already have two links here and it's on the last one on the inside. <clears throat> All right, so with the inside adjusted, now I just kinda wanna pull the chain slack out and we can adjust here. The way these tire chains work is by these locking, uh, I guess you could call them like maybe a carabiner. Um, just simple, simple stuff. I don't have a cam buckle. If you buy like a really nice one, they have a cam buckle that you actually just twist and lock and it'll tighten it up. We're gonna get another link or two out of this, I think. Like that. So as I use this for the first couple times, I'll keep an eye on this chain to make sure it's staying tight. And as the chain finds where it naturally wants to sit in this tread, I might need to take another link or two out of this. So the last step to this process is to put bungees on it and that just keeps tension on the chain. So I just kind of pick areas that are across from each other and just put a bungee on. Just like that. I only run two bungees on here because that's really all you need. I mean, it doesn't need to do much, it just needs to hold a little tension on these chains. There you go. All right guys, well the tire chains are on and they might not be the prettiest or, you know, they might not look like they're on there the best yet. Trust me, when I tell you that these will straighten out just by driving on them, they do. Because this is the first set of tire chains I've put on a tractor. Now I've put them on ATVs before, but ATVs is a much smaller tire, it's much easier. I put these on last year and they looked ugly like this. I mean, they weren't straight, nothing was lined up, but after using them for one snow plowing session, they all straightened up and I just had to tighten them up a little bit. So they might not be the most robust, they might not be the prettiest, but they're very functional. I didn't have any links break last year and you need them. At least where I'm at, you need them, especially with the snow blower. That's gonna be dead weight that we're trying to push, so I need this extra traction. 
Now, if you're serious about making a set of tire chains, it's not hard. Trust me, this is the first set I've ever made and they turned out pretty well. So if you have a grinder, a MIG welder, I mean, you could probably do it with a stick welder, I don't see why not, but if you have a grinder and a welder, you can make these. Again, I'll put the video down in the description so you guys can check that out. And I mean, I, like I said, don't quote me on this, but I think it was around 300 bucks. So thanks for sticking around, guys. Make sure you subscribe. Hit a big thumbs up on this one. Is that, is that too lame to say? I'm an adult. Don't hit a big thumbs up. Just like the video for me. That tells the algorithm that you'd enjoyed this video and other people might enjoy it. So hit the thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.